Kevlum in fourth place has managed to hold on ahead of Coke Lopez. Now Lopez coming to pressure from Mangano. Conanon as well as Tapai, not too far adrift as they all run nose to tail coming through the first corner. Here's Lopez back up the inside then of Kevlum. Side by side they come through the first corner. Kevlum's going to try and hold it around the outside. Runs off onto the grass bit wide there as Lopez forces the issue. Here comes Mangano as well on the inside, but he's going to flick it left and doesn't have the track position. So Lopez, a beautiful bit of driving there for him. Now, and Adam Tapai on the soccer compound is going to be a little bit quicker than him. Coming out of Savalo and in towards Blanchimont, this is where we should see those soft tyres closed up. The braking zone in particular of the bus stop would be an opportunity for him to find his way past. But Tapai goes all the way around the outside of Blanchimont. That's brilliant from Adam Tapai. Lays on the brakes into the bus stop and he is through into seventh position. That was very ballsy there from the Hungarian. Masterful from Brooks there, just sitting on the racing line, sitting on the apex, not giving anyone any sort of opportunity to respond. Here, the is going to take advantage there, but then getting a little bit too close to Brooks, muscles his way by. That was proper opportunistic driving there. The anger in the Stroms, and not just him as well, Karatsa gets through in the background, and Benelli's down to fifth. I told you, as soon as you move out of line, you get to shuffle. And Benelli's gone from third to fifth in as many corners. Ryota's on the outside, he's on the wrong side. Mizuno's going to have the corner here. If he can just send it into his side, take the apex away and run him out wide. No, he can't. He can't keep it tight enough there. And now they're running still together. Kokeman might about have the exit. Mizuno still on the inside and he's made it through. Kokeman makes it past Mizuno, but the race is not done yet. This is going to come through into the final couple of corners then. Kokeman's really got pressure on him. Mizuno is going to try and go. Kokeman's gone defensive. Mizuno goes for the outside line then. Is he going to be able to find his way past here? Into the final couple of corners. He's got great closing speed. Mizuno going to send it down the inside, nearly into the final corner. But Ryota Kokeman, what a great final lap. Time to perfection. Kokeman leads the field over, the drivers going into the slipstream to try and close up on everybody else. It's a long run down to that first corner and Kokeman knows that. Look at how defensive he's going and look at the attack already from Takuma Miyazono. Yamanaka's having a look down the inside of Miyazono as Miyazono tries to get to the outside. Kokeman holds on, Yamanaka's on the inside with Miyazono wide on the outside there. Kokeman is like a man possessed on this final lap. He's really putting the pressure onto Yamanaka. He needs, he needs to have the Yamanaka. He can't fail second position if he does, and Koski and Boski Karakami is going to get him here. So this is all about defence now for this last set. The Kokeman on the superior tyre. Tons more grip than Yamanaka. And also the draft going down the straight. Yamanaka defending for his life through the last set. That's all he can do right now from a charging Kokeman. This could be a drag for the line there between Yamanaka and Ryota Kokeman then. So Takuma Miyazono is going to win this one on the road, but it's all about Yamanaka versus Kokeman for a place in the world final later on this year. So through into the final corner, Kokeman closes up onto the brakes and out of the final corner they come now. He needs a connection here, does Ryota Kokeman. Takuma Miyazono wins the grand final for the Asia Oceana region, but who's going to take second? Yamanaka is just going to hold